Welcome back. In this video, we are going to add and subtract radical expressions. And adding and subtracting radical expressions is very similar to adding and, and subtracting like terms. When we add and subtract like terms, we need to have the same variables in each term with the same exponents on those variables. Well, with radical expressions, we need the same index and the same radicand, okay? Which means the same index means, well, we have to have all square roots or all cube roots or all fourth roots. So we have to have the same index. And then the same radicand, we have to have the same number underneath the radical. So in order to add and subtract radicals, we must have the same type of radical, the same index, and the same value inside the radical, the same radicand. So 13 times the cube root of 5 minus 2 times the cube root of 5, these I can subtract these. I've got the same index and the same radicand, 5. So like, just as in like terms, where we simply add or subtract the coefficients, we do the same here. So 13 minus 2 is 11. So our simplified answer is 11 times the cube root of 5. In this particular example, we've got the square root of 2 and the square root of 5. Well, these are not like radicands. I've got the same index square roots, but not like radicands, so we cannot simplify. And in our other example here, now we have the same radicand, 2, but we have the fifth root of 2 and the cube root of 2, and because the index is different, uh, we cannot simplify. So this one is simplified as far as it's going to go. So let's take a look at some sample problems, see if we can do some simplifying here. We have 3 radical 5, or 3 times the square root of 5, plus 7 times the square root of 5. So we have the same index, we have the same radicand, so this would simplify to 10 square root of 5. In this one, now we have 2 square root of 11 minus 1 square root of 11 plus 3 radical 44. Well, radical 44, square root of 44, and the radicands of 11, th those are not like, so we, we wouldn't be able to add these. Now, we can certainly do the 2 square root of 11 minus the square root of 11 and get just 1 times the square root of 11. I'll put the 1 there. We won't normally do that. But the square root of 44, you might recognize that. That's got a perfect square in it. 4. So that is the square root of 4 times the square root of 11. So we really have plus 3 times 2 radical 11. So now we have the square root of 11 plus 3 times 2 is 6. Square root of 11 and 1 plus 6 is 7. So we get 7 square root of 11. So we can do more simplifying. So we can take that square root of 44 in this case and we use the square root of 4 and square root of 11, and thus got that 2 there. Let's move on to a couple more challenging problems. This is a little bit more challenging. We have the cube root of p to the 4th, q to the 7th, minus the cube root of 64pq. So it looks like we can't do any simplifying here. We have the same index, but we don't have the same variables inside. Well, just like we simplified the square root of 44, we can simplify p to the 4th and q to the 7th. We can take cube roots of those. In fact, the next perfect cube here is p cubed, so this would be p and a q squared times the cube root of p So pq squared times the cube root of pq. And the cube root of 64 is 4. So that's minus 4 
times the cube root of PQ. Now you would think we couldn't simplify this any further even though we have the same index with PQ and the same radicand with PQ and the same index with the cube root but PQ squared and negative 4 aren't like terms. But we do have a common factor. Our, our radical here is a, co a common factor. I can factor that out and my final answer is the cube root of PQ times PQ squared minus 4. So there's my simplified factored answer. D is a little bit different. That's not quite the same as what we had over here where our, our whole radical expression could be factored out. That's not going to work here. We got 9 radical 5 minus 4 times 1 radical 5 times radical 2. So yes, radical 5 is a common factor, but we still end up with this, this radical 2 here. So we can't get rid of all our radicals. We can't factor out our, our full common radical. So believe it or not, this one is fully simplified. That is our final answer there. Let's take a look at E and F. These are a little bit more complicated. Um, 2 times radical 32 over 36. Uh, well, we know that's radical th 32 over radical 36, which is, well, that's going to be radical 16, square root of 16 times the square root of 2 all over 6. So 2 times 4, so we end up with 8 radical square root of 2 over 6, which is 4 square root of 2 all over 3. So we can simplify that side, but now we want to add it to 2 square root of 27 over the square root of 108. If you're really paying attention here, we might see that the square root of 27, well, the square root of 108 is the square root of 4 times the square root of 27. Those simplify and become 1. So that becomes plus 2 over 2, which is plus 1. So we have 4 radical square root of 2 over 3 plus 1. But in this case, we're going to want a common denominator. We want to add these two fractions. So I'm going to multiply the 1 by 3 over 3. And sure enough, 1 is 3 over 3. So we get 4 radical 2, oops, 4 radical 2 plus 3 all over 3. And that is our fully simplified answer. So we can add our two terms over our common denominator. The square root of 80 over y to the fourth. Well, the square root of 80 is the square root of 16 times the square root of 5 all over, well, the square root of y to the fourth is y squared. So we get 4 square root of 5 over y squared plus the square root of 81 over the square root of y to the tenth using our quotient rule again. So that's 9 over y to the fifth. So plus 9 over y to the fifth. So we want to add our two fractions, but we have a we need a common denominator to do so. So we need a common denominator to do that, so we will multiply that the left side by y cubed over y cubed, and we get 4y cubed radical 5 plus 9 all over y to the fifth. 
That wraps up adding and subtracting radical expressions, and we will see you in class.